Ok. okay. Euh, bonjour, alors euh, merci d'être venu nombreux pour écouter euh, Stéphane euh, Zaleski qui a très gentiment accepté notre invitation aujourd'hui alors qu'il est occupé ouais. euh, de nous parler d'hydrogène, euh, des difficultés pour le produire et le gérer ensuite. Euh, donc euh, tout le monde connaît Stéphane sauf quelques-uns, donc Stéphane euh, est un chercheur, euh, on va dire, euh, imminemment connu dans la communauté pour euh, son travail sur les impacts et les gouttes, et, y compris les toutes petites gouttes, puisque ceux qui sont là depuis quelques années ont peut-être entendu parler de son travail sur les aérosols pendant le Covid, Alors, le Covid est passé, là, on a un gros problème avec euh, l'énergie, il nous parle d'hydrogène. Euh, Quoi dire Rien. Bon, moi, je vais ajouter quelque chose. Uh, uh, so, thank you very much, uh, Lydie. I will speak in English because uh, a lot of my collaborators who are in the room are non-French speaking, so it will re re be a pity if I spoke in French. Uh, the seminar has stemmed for a conversation with you, Lydie, uh, where we discussed uh, whether Uh, it was um, a good idea to use a lot of s computer power or travel by plane to do research. And I was arguing that maybe our research also helps to solve the climate crisis, so that in that sense, uh, maybe um, we can uh, justify some of the computations uh, from that point of view. And um, the The title really should be producing clean hydrogen and using it, any type of, type of hydrogen, and transporting it in three related fluid mechanical primes. I apologize in advance, I will talk about these primes relatively quickly, because it's also in Toulouse, the, uh, the conference for the birthday of Jacques Magnodet, who is also a very famous uh, uh, fluid mechanician, and um, Unfortunately, Stefan Popinet will not be here because he's not here today because he's in Toulouse, and also Christophe Josserand, uh, who uh, some of you know and who is also interested in these primes. Um, but uh, I, so I need to uh, to leave uh, soon afterwards. I hope there will not be an alarm for uh, training, for evacuation training, because that would be really worse. Uh, so the the collaborators. Uh, Uh, on these topics, uh, there is greater Trickvesson on the paralysis, uh, a number of other people. Uh, uh, so, mm, some of you, uh, some of them are in this room, such as uh, Villemain, uh, it's her last day. <laughs> And um, uh, there are other topics, actually, Villemain works on something unrelated to what I'm going to talk about today. She works on underground storage of hydrogen. Underground storage is a big issue because you could imagine one hydrogen economy where uh, you would be producing hydrogen in the North Sea by electrolysis with electricity produced by wind power. And then you would store the hydrogen underground in the oil and gas reservoirs of the North Sea. So, uh, and so that would uh, um, avoid transporting the hydrogen by pipeline or by um, by ship uh, continuously, but you just transport it when you need it. Um, the students and postdocs, so, so I underlined the names of those who have actually also collaborated with those above on these, uh, on these hydrogen issues. And there are some companies involved, Airbus through a European project, so they are not really giving their money. And, um, well, at least they are not receiving money for that. And uh, ArcelorMittal Research, which actually uh, giving a little bit of money to do a CIFR thesis. Um, so, of course, most of you know this, but it's, uh, it's worth uh, thinking about it. This is the global temperature record since the 19th century, and you see this uh, rapid acceleration, and, and now you, have, you know, uh, if you read the news, that there is an El Nino event that has created this kind of peak, which has uh, really increase things tremendously, so it's a bit uh, worrisome. Um, but if you look at the trend, okay, maybe there is an acceleration, maybe not, we'll, we have to, to see. I tend to trust the clim climate modelers. Um, some people don't trust the climate modelers. Of course, it's a big societal prime, but I think in a scientific community, you tend to, to trust them. 
and um, here you can see the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So this little dip here is the trace of COVID. Because of COVID, we have reduced a lot of activity and uh, hence reduced CO2. Uh, uh, and then we are recovering. It's only until 2021 because this is the um, the only graph I found in Our World in Data. I recommend Our World in Data. There is, it's a fantastic website. We get all, all sorts of free data. And the people who maintain it are really great. I would like to focus on France because there is, a, there, in fact, we must acknowledge there is a lot of political issues in this. And uh, since we are, most of us in this room maybe vote in France, so uh, they, and uh, participate in the French debate. So it's, it's useful to see in particular what is happening in France. Well, in some things, in some ways, France is doing well. In other ways, maybe uh, not so well. Uh, one very optimistic piece of news you could find, uh, actually it was something like, uh, uh, it, it was uh, mm, it, it was republished last week with more data for 2023. The the greenhouse gas emissions of France have decreased. Wow, that is fantastic. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, that is the whole curve of France uh, since uh, mm, uh, 1802. Well, uh, you know. Maybe you remember from your history classes that the Industrial Revolution started in England or in the UK uh, in the 18th century. And then it started in France and Germany maybe 50 years later or 100 years later. So that's why France really starts only around here. The UK starts earlier. And then China, India, etc. start even later. Okay? So you see that you have this very strong decrease, including now I have one more data point from 21 to 22, and so we seem to be decreasing now, which, uh, which is good. Uh, but you have to look at other, other things. So land use changes. Land use changes, basically, if you uh, have uh, something uh, uh, called in French exode rural, that is, uh, Farmers decide it's not worth farming anymore, and they move to the city to work in industry. And so I think in that in that case, you you f you transform a lot of land, maybe in Creuse, where I, I also have uh, some some links, uh, into a forest. So that perhaps explains this huge uh, negative emission. These are negative emissions of 60 million tons a slot coming from land use change. There could be other emissions in different types of agriculture, different types of, uh, um, of use of the land, but it's still negative now. It's not as negative as it was in 1965, but it's also good that not too many farms disappear. You have seen what happens in the news when you tell the farmers to produce 4% left. All, all France is blocked. Um, and so, so we, we, but, but we still have some negative component. Yes? Are you saying that the decline that we are say, seeing is not for good reasons? We have a decline not because of a political uh, actually, reason? Actually, it is not uh, what I'm saying, but that's what I, I, I had predicted that. So. It doesn't matter. It, it usually lasts only 10 minutes, so.